Hey everyone, welcome to KSSP Podcast. I am Spencer. And I'm Katie. Today we're going to be talking about romantic relationships. This is just our personal advice. I will also be pulling some stuff up from a WebMD page for a little bit during this. But for the most part, this is just our personal advice with what we've been through. We're not trained professionals. Uh, this is just from our experience, what we've learned. Aside from WebMD stuff. Yeah. And everyone's experience is going to be personal too. So yes, exactly. Just, if something fits, then that's okay to take it. Like kind of a, like you have any advice, you just have to personalize as well. In any case, at anyone who gives you advice, you have to make it personal and like yeah you have what to make it sure it sticks you. if it doesn't then you can throw it yes out. yes exactly so, nobody knows all yeah so all right here we go we're gonna start this off i'm gonna start this off the most important relationship advice that i could possibly give is you need to be close friends with your partner like if you don't have a baseline friendship and your foundation like it's gonna be extremely difficult if not like impossible to have like a healthy relationship with your partner because you need to be able to communicate with them. Uh, every relationship is going to have a different dynamic, but it's important to treat each other as equals instead of establishing a hierarchy in the relationship of any kind. So now I'm going to go over a WebMD article here. And this is going to be signs of an abusive relationship. So what is an abusive relationship? It describes any relationship where one person exerts power and control over the other in a negative way. It can be physical, emotional, verbal, financial, or any other type of behavior that keeps one person under the control of another. There are many common aspects of abusive relationships. Every individual relationship will look slightly different. It's often difficult for people in abusive relationships to realize that they are in one. Very true. Uh, one of the most common aspects of an abusive relationship is the abusive person insisting that what they do is normal and not harmful. That's gaslighting, making it hard for the victimized person to understand their situation. There is no type of person that is immune to abuse or unable to become an abuser. This is very fucking, this is very important right here. This is, no person is immune to being abused or abusing others. It can be people of any ethnicity, rage, race, age, gender, what sexual orientation, whatever, can be the victim of abuse. It's never the fault of the abused person. Abuse is always the responsibility of the abuser. So, okay, people who are victims of abusive relationships, they live with a number of problems as a result of their abuse, including feelings of isolation, embarrassment, depression, anxiety, suicidal feelings, addictions, injuries, financial problems. While some conflict is norm normal in any healthy relationship, healthy relationships involve two people who are both free to disagree, debate, and have their own opinions. So abusive relationships involve one party controlling the other's thoughts, feelings, or actions. Recognizing the signs can help you avoid or escape an abusive relationship. So every re abusive relationship will involve different mode, different methods of control. The underlying themes are the same. So here are the signs to watch out for. Communication monitoring. People who are abusive may try to monitor your communication with other people. They may ask to read your texts, emails, log into your devices without permission, or even install tracking software to keep tags on your social life. They will frequently use this against you later. Isolation. Abusive partners also commonly isolate the people they abuse. The abusive person may spread lies about you, or they may try to convince you that your family and friends don't actually like you. Either way, the goal is to cut you off from your support systems that could otherwise help you leave the relationship. Financial control. In some abusive relationships, the abusive party will work to remove their partner's control over their own finances. This is intended to make it harder for the abused person to leave the relationship. The abusive person may cut off access to your accounts, hide information about your financial situation, or try to make you quit your job. Coercion. 
another common tactic of abuse is to force you to do things you don't want to do, whether through begging, threats, force, or emotional manipulation. This can include sexual activities, but it can also include any other behavior that you do not want to do. Abusive people may also use coercion to keep you in the relationship if you try to leave. Emotional manipulation. Um, One of the most common types is emotional abuse. This can include insulting you, humiliating you in front of others, making you feel like you're crazy, calling you names, making you feel guilty for normal activities. Healthy relationships involve both partners building each other up. Abusive relationships involve one party tearing the other down. Physical violence. Finally, physical violence is the most well-known sign of an abusive relationship. If your partner ever hits or hurts you in any way, your relationship is likely abusive. Dealing with an abusive relationship. If you're in an abusive relationship, your best course of action is to end it and leave your abusive partner. This can be scary. So it's important to have a plan in place. And this is not always safe for everybody either. No, so you need to know when it is also safe for you to leave. Uh, Know when you're going, know where you're going before you leave and let your friends and family know that you are planning to leave your partner. You can also reach out. And that's very important. Do let other people, like if you're worried about how your partner is going to react to you leaving them, you need to let other people know that, hey, I'm leaving my partner. And if something happens, like this is where I'll be type of thing to keep yourself safe. Uh, You can also reach out to local resources for help. You need a place to go or help get back on your feet. So we've got the National Domestic Violence Hotline here, the hotline.org or 1-800-788-SAFE, National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, ncadv.org or your local police 911. So that's the article I had. Um, And then I just have a few more pieces of personal advice I'd like to put out there as well. Uh, If you feel that there are huge disagreements or miscommunications in your relationship, couples therapy is always a good option if you have access to it. Having a third objective party to help navigate conversations between the two of you can be an important tool. Uh, As with all forms of therapy, you may have to try a couple of therapists before you find one that works for you. And that's okay. Just don't give up on therapy just because you've had one or two bad therapists. And that just applies to any therapy in general, too. But with couples therapy, I guess is what I'm specifically talking about here. All right, next, next point here. Never marry someone, have kids with them, or move in with them when there are already significant problems in the relationship. Because marrying someone, having kids with them, or moving in with them, your problems are only going to get worse when you take these large steps towards commitment if the problems are unaddressed or ignored. And you can't change people who don't want to change. You alone cannot fix your partner. If your partner is refusing to change for you and is disrespecting your boundaries in the process after a conversation about the issues, it's okay to leave them. Or even if you don't feel safe to have that conversation, it's still okay to leave them. Just have a plan in place and keep yourself safe. You can't change people who don't want to change. You alone cannot fix your partner. If your partner is refusing to change for you and is disrespecting your boundaries in the process after a conversation about the issues, it's okay to leave them. Just be safe. And last point here, it's better to be single than in an unhealthy relationship. A lot of people would rather have the companionship of someone who isn't treating them well than be single, but it's important to know that holding on to an unhealthy relationship is just inherently unhealthy for yourself. And you'll be healthier as an individual being single than you will in an unhealthy relationship. Yeah. That's about all I have to say on it. That was, okay. Um, I think I didn't have too much, but... I'll just say for, so I know we're focusing on like romantic relationships, but I would also say, especially for like the abusive aspect that can happen in like any type of, like that can be like friendship or family or anything really. So I think it's just good to be aware of the signs just in general, Oh, for sure. but it is obviously important for romantic relationships too but i just wanted to say that you should also just keep it not like that's very true just because you're not in a romantic relationship with someone doesn't mean that they that you can't be have a right to abuse you though either yeah 
Um, and yeah, anyone can abuse anyone. So it's like, and obviously then with abuse, there's like elder abuse and all sorts of abuse. So it's just good to be aware of abuse in general. But any of those signs, I would say, in any kind of relationship too. Um, and then I think you mentioned it a little bit. One thing that I always recommend is just like open communication with about anything in your relationship, whether that's your wants, needs, like this, like you have to kind of, if something's bothering you, you just have to be able to talk about it with your partner. Cause if you, it's just important to have that open communication. Cause if you can't have that open communication, I would say you should assess why you feel like you can't have that open communication because yeah. in a partnership, you should be able to just talk to each other. And I'm not saying that conversations are easy. They're probably one of the hardest things. I would, I mean, maybe not the hardest, but they can be hard. They're definitely. Yes. They're difficult. All I would say any conversation that can feel like it may be stressful is could is going to feel difficult and that's okay. But we still need to be able to have those conversations and yeah. we shouldn't be afraid to have those conversations either. And that doesn't mean that emotions won't be strong during the conversation. And again, that's okay. Maybe you just need to take a step away from each other and regroup in a sense. But you should, you still, we still need to be having like those conversations, I would say, is one thing. And then. I think you also mentioned it again, but partnership is not ownership. Nobody owns anybody. It is a mutual relationship where you are both, what did I say? You are both still individuals with individual autonomy. Yes, 100%. No one person controls the other. I think that's, and that's, again, you can generalize that to friendships or any type of relationship, but... For sure, in a relationship, you cannot let your partner control you and tell you what to do. Now, that doesn't mean there can't be boundaries. And there can be, what is that other word? Compromises. Mm -hmm. Definitely. That's okay. But control is not okay. And then I think, again, a huge important thing for, you could generalize this to any relationship, but especially romantic relationships, is you need a good, strong sense of self. Because you need to... It's hard to have a relationship with someone when you don't even necessarily have a good relationship with yourself. Yes. I'm not going to claim it's impossible, but without that strong relationship with yourself, you almost let like the partner end up like you almost in a sense can... may end up taking on the identity of your partner yeah, you more so totally than you have in your own. Yes. Yes. So and I'm not saying by that means that you have to be like fully healthy, healed, 100% healed before you can get into relationships. But it is something that you need to be aware of how much yes. sense of self you have and be working on improving that. I don't think that should necessarily 100% keep you from relationships if you feel as long as you're honest and open again, open communication. And you're just remembering that you are both individual autonomous people and you guys are still gonna be able to make like your own decisions and just be yourselves in a way but otherwise i think that was all that i had to add all right awesome. for relationships i guess <laughs> cool but yeah so is that all you had yeah. to okay so you guys can just leave a comment below letting us know what you want us to talk about in future episodes. Yeah, you can reach out to us here on YouTube or you can go to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok. And we do also do some Twitch live streams occasionally. So you can check those out. Yes. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you know when we do. But otherwise, we will see you guys next time.